Okay, this is lesson 7.1 on zero and negative exponents. I gave you a handout in class today to take notes with. Make sure you have that ready to go. If you need to go find it, hit the pause button, come back to it. Here we go. Now today's learning target is that you will be able to simplify expressions that have zero and negative exponents in them. So by the time we finish today, you should be able to come to class tomorrow ready to solve some zero and negative exponents. If you haven't already taken the time to look at the table on the worksheet, go ahead and do that now. Complete the table without a calculator, and then you can hit the pause button, come back to me when you're ready. Okay, now if you look at the table, there's two columns. One column is powers of two, one power is a column with powers of 10. I'm gonna start right in the middle, not like that. I'm going to start in the middle with this 2 to the first power and 10 to the first power. The bottom half has 0 and negative exponents, which we will look at and define in a second. But for me, 2 to the first power is easy because that just means 2. And 10 to the first power is 10. If you increase the exponent, 2 to the second power just means 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 to the third power just means 2 times 2 times 2, 3 2s, which is 8. 2 to the fourth power is 4 2s being multiplied together, that's 16. Same with the powers of 10. 10 times 10 is 100, that's 10 to the second power. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. Now, you may have learned a trick where, when you have powers of 10, the exponent tells you how many zeros follow the 1. 10 to the first, 1 zero. 10 to the second, two zeros, 10 to the third, three zeros, so 10 to the fourth is four zeros. You also may have remembered an exponential pattern that would be repeated multiplication. As you increase the exponent, you're just repeatedly multiplying. In this case, it's repeatedly multiplying by two. Two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16. So if you go down, and decrease the power, then you're not multiplying by two, you're dividing by two. 16 divided by two is eight, eight divided by two is four, four divided by two is two. And if we continue that pattern, two divided by two is one. So two to the zero power is one. Same is true with 10. A thousand divided by 10 is a hundred, a hundred divided by 10 is 10, so 10 divided by 10 is one. And that leads us to our first definition. That's the zero exponents definition, and here it is. If a is not zero, that means the number that you're raising to the zero power is not zero, then any number raised to the zero power will always equal one. I can raise 12 to the zero power, that equals one. I can raise 2.3 to the zero power, that equals one. I can raise 7 sixteenths to the zero power, that equals 1. I can even raise negative 8 to the zero power, and that equals 1. Now notice the, the number that I put in parentheses, it's all that stuff inside being raised to the zero power, which is why this last one ends up being positive 1. And we'll look at that in more detail later. If we continue with the pattern, and we keep dividing by 2, then 1 divided by 2 is 1 half, and then 1 half divided by 2 is 1 fourth. Same thing is true with the tens. 1 divided by 10 is 1 tenth, and 1 tenth divided by 10 is 1 one hundredth. Now this definition is a little bit more difficult to see, but it helps with the table that if you have a negative exponent, then it's going to be true again that if a is not zero, then a negative exponent is defined like this. A to the negative first power is equal to one over A to the positive first power. So let's just look at a couple examples. Look at the first one in example one, nine to the negative second power. According to the definition, I can change this negative exponent to be positive just by moving it to the bottom of the fraction. 
1 over 9 to the positive second power, just like 1 over 8 to the first power. And I can simplify it further because 9 to the second power is 81, so my answer is 1 over 81. Part B, everything inside the parentheses is being raised to the zero power. Everything raised to the zero power always equals 1, and that's it. Now the next part of this says, now it's your turn and asks you to do it on your own. I'm going to go ahead and do them with you because I'd like to show you a way to think of negative exponents that will help as these get more complicated. So if you look at the first example, it says 4 to the negative third power. I'm going to write that as a fraction over 1 because I can write any number, any whole number can be written as a fraction just by putting it over 1. Now the way I think of it is if I have a negative exponent, all I have to do is move the negative exponent and change it to be positive. So 4 to the negative third, I'm going to move it down to the bottom of the fraction and make it 4 to the positive third power. Moving the number with a negative exponent from one part of the fraction down to the other part changes the exponent to be positive. Now if I move it, what's left on top is nothing, but you can't have nothing in a fraction, so you put a 1. So 4 to the negative third power becomes 1 over 4 to the positive third power. And 4 to the positive third power is 64, so my answer is 1 over 64. Part B, negative 5 raised to the 0 power, any number raised to the zero power always equals one. Next one, three to the negative second power, I'm gonna write it as a fraction. The negative exponent on the number tells me I need to move it to make it a positive exponent, so I move it down to the bottom and make it three to the positive two. Now, some people might say, well, what happened to that one that you put there? It's still there. It's being multiplied, but 1 times anything is just the same number. 1 times 4 to the third power is still just 4 to the third power. Since I've moved it, the top of the fraction, I'm just left with 1. 1 over 3 to the second power. 3 to the second power is 9, so the answer is 1 ninth. D, 6 to the negative first power. Make it a fraction, put it over 1. Take this number that has a negative exponent and move it down. becomes 1 over 6 to the positive first power, which is just 6, 1 over 6. Now part E has a couple of negatives in it. Don't let that confuse you. The negative exponent is what tells me to move the number, so I'm going to move it down to the bottom, and I'm left with 1 over, still have the parentheses, negative 4, raised to now the positive second power. Negative 4 raised to the second power means negative 4 times negative 4, and negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Okay, I realize that's a lot, but that's why you're watching the video, and then you can come to class with questions. Okay, turn your hand out over, look at the back side. They get a little bit more complicated. So let's just take a look at the first example, 5a to the third power, b to the negative second power. The only thing that's in this problem that you can change or that you can simplify is the negative exponent. And the negative exponent in this problem is only attached to the b. So just like the other problems, I'm going to make it a fraction by writing it over 1. And I'm going to move the exponent that is negative down to the bottom to make the exponent positive. So if I move b to the negative second power down to the bottom, it becomes b to the positive second power. And what's left on top is 5a to the third power. There's no other way to simplify this, so you're done. That's the answer. In the second example, there's a negative exponent, but now the negative exponent is on the bottom of the fraction. If there's a negative exponent, and I want to change it to be a positive exponent, I move it. So instead of moving it from the top down to the bottom, I'm going to move it from the bottom up to the top. 
And when I move x to the negative fifth up to the top, it becomes x to the positive fifth. Now, the 1 that's in the fraction is still there, but 1 times x to the fifth is just x to the fifth. And since I've moved this x to the negative fifth up to the top, there's really nothing left in the bottom, but you could put a 1 there. But 1 on the bottom of a fraction could just be left out, so your answer is x to the fifth. So let's just look at the next ones. Again, I will do these for you. If you just follow along and copy them down, then you can get your practice when you come to class tomorrow. So looking at the first one, I'm going to take the x to the negative ninth. I'm going to make it a fraction. And to change the negative exponent to be positive, I move it down. What's left is 1 over x to the positive ninth. In the next one, b. 1 over n to the negative third. n has a negative exponent, so if I move it up to the top, it becomes positive. n to the positive third. The 1's still there being multiplied, but I just don't have to write it. There's a 1 on the bottom of the fraction that I don't have to write. My answer is just n to the positive third. In the next one, the only thing that has a negative exponent is the c. So I make it a fraction. Write it over 1. I'm going to take this part, move it down to the bottom. When I move it down to the bottom, I change the exponent from negative 3 to positive 3. And what's left on top is a 4 and a b. And that's it. Part d, a to the negative third is negative exponent. I want to change that to positive. So when I want to change a negative exponent, to be positive, I have to move it. Since it's on the bottom, I move it up to the top. When I move it up to the top, it becomes a to the positive third. There's already a 2 up there. And that's it. Now, if you wanted to write the 1 underneath, you could, but you don't have to. And the last one, e, the only thing that has a negative exponent is the n, n to the negative fifth. So I can move it down to the bottom to make n to the negative fifth into n to the positive fifth. On the bottom, there was already an m to the second. I don't move it. It's a positive exponent, so I don't have to move that from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top. And because I've moved this n to the negative fifth down to the bottom, I'm left with nothing on the top of a fraction, which you can't leave it as nothing, so you have to put 1 in as a placeholder, and that's it. Okay. Take a few seconds to summarize what you've learned and come to class tomorrow ready to do some work.